type. In this example, I will demonstrate how to use VTK for processing particle data or specifically generating particle data in this case. Okay, so the, what I would like to do in this example is that I would like to read a mesh, so in this case, this created mesh we've been working with, and I would like to seed particles near the wall. Okay, because I'd like to study, let's say, you know, particle transport near the wall. I'd like to see the particles near the wall and see where they go. So, um, so I would like to see how we can I can do that in a Python with UK, at least the seeding part. So I can see the initial position of the particles and then use my particle tracking code for that purpose. Okay, so uh, I define the input file name, the mesh. I define the output and I define a distance near the wall where I'd like to see the particles. And I can define which side of the normals. So in, obviously in this case, I wanna be inside. I don't wanna go outside of the domain. And then there's a flag for writing binary format, which is turned off here, but this is um, um, this was used for, uh, for our in-house codes uh, that reads the coordinates of the particles for seeding them for our in-house particle tracking code. Okay. Great. So what I do is that first I read the XML, I use VTK XML and structured grid reader. I set the file name, I execute the reader, get the output. And then what I do is that I extract the service. So similar to what we've been doing in many of these examples, we use the VTK dataset surface filter and we extract the surface. Okay. And then once I do that, I calculate the surface normals using VTK poly data normals. I set the input, which is the data, so the input to VTK polydata normals has to be a surface mesh. And you know, I've already converted my 3D mesh to just a surface in this first step here. And then I get the normals. I can decide which side of the normals I want to be. And then I get the data from the normals. And now I need to know my normal vector array. So when normals are created by Paraview using this VTK polydata normals filter, the array that that VTK um, automatically creates is called normals like this. So I'm going to get that array. I'm going to get use data, get points data, get array, get this normals array. This is going to be a VTK array, but I'd like to do NumPy type programming with it. So I convert it to NumPy, similar to how we've done before. I call the result normal array. Okay. And I can also read the total number of points that I have. Then what I do, I, uh, I define an initial condition or initial position really here for my particles. And uh, what I do is I loop over all the particles. I read the point for every particle, i. I store it into I, the ICRA. So this initial condition is contains um, uh, the point on the wall, basically. So coordinates, the x, y, z coordinates for the point on the wall, y on the wall, because I am using data array, and data was the, the extracted surface. So when I extract the surface, I over, I, I, I have written over the data structure I've already had. So I have this x, y, z points, and then I have the normal array vector. So this is the x, y, z component of the normal vector that I just computed. And I know how far away from the wall in the normal direction I want to be. That's the normal wall distance that I specified down here. So then I can define the new X, Y, Z positions and I can insert these points into these points array here. And uh, what I can do down here is I can define a VTK poly data structure and set these points that I inserted here and then write the VTK poly data. Okay, so this will be a VTK file that has, it's, it will not be a mesh-based file anymore. So it's a VTK, it's a poly data. This one is going to be a series of just points that are the coordinates of my particles. Okay, let's take a look. So I've loaded it here. So if you click on it, you will not see anything. To visualize particle-based data in Paraview, you want to apply glyph to it, set the glyph type to be sphere, and then apply. So you can see you get these huge spheres here. Uh, uh, and uh, let me scale it to a little bit smaller value. Okay, so it's probably too small, but what I can do is I can zoom in to my domain and I can see, now I can see these particles that I've seeded normal to the wall, normal to the wall inside my domain. So if I go inside my R3 one more time, I can see all these particles that I've created. Now, 
keep in mind that Travi by default sparsifies your data. So if you want to use see all the points, change glyph mode to all points, apply. Here's here are all the points that we see that. And if I take my data, original data, show surface with edges and zoom in even further, I can see that for every node in my surface mesh, I have a Lagrangian particle corresponding to that that has been seeded normal to the wall with a distance that I specified away from that node. So now I have these, all these positions. I can take that, read it into my uh, particle tracking code and do any kind of particle tracking that I'd like to do. Okay, so this was really for demonstration purposes, but I want to want to caution you against something. If you're interested in transport near the wall for biotransport applications where you have thin barriers, using this approach for seeding particles near the wall with the hope of being able to study mass transport in those extremely thin barriers is very, very challenging task. So in this paper, this JFM paper, where we first talked about the concept of watchless topology, we talk about this in detail. And we say that this is going to, it's numerically very challenging to make sure particles stay near the wall because of numerical issues. So in this paper, we specifically also talk, we developed a method to track particles just on the surface, confined on the surface using a surface transport model. Okay, instead of seeding particles in this small distance near the wall, like you see here, and tracking them based on a 3D particle tracking scheme. So we use a surface or a manifold-based particle tracking scheme. Okay, so that's one thing. And also in this, I won't talk much about, but in this uh, in the GitHub repository for this uh, case, I'm also going to provide another example for processing particle-based data. So this is a code we use that my student Ali developed in the past for quantifying particle deposition in long airways. So this shows you an example of how, if you already have this type of VTK particle data, and you also have a mesh too, that you want to calculate certain things like concentration or things like that, how can you do that? So I'll let you look into this code yourself, but this is uh, another great example of if you already have particle-based data and, and how can you process that to get things like concentration? Okay. 